Well, what's an ionic bond? An ionic bond is when you have a metal and a nonmetal, as we just reviewed. Uh, metals tend to lose electrons to become cations. That means that they have a positive charge. And nonmetals tend to gain electrons to become negatively charged. That makes them an anion. So you have a cation and an anion. And the attraction between those opposite charges is what's what actually gives you the bond between um, metals and nonmetals. That opposite charge, opposites attract, is what gives you the bond itself. Um, in ionic bonding, electrons are going to be completely transferred, um, and they're going to have atoms that are ch that have a positive charge and a neg negative charge. And then again, the attraction between the positive and negative is what gives you the actual bond itself with ionic bonding. Uh, bo uh, all the elements on the periodic table, they have a pattern for how they're going to form ions, and it goes like this. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus skip, 3 minus 2 minus 1 minus dip. So everybody in this first column is going to be a 1 plus, so everybody over here is going to lose one electron to become one positive. So hydrogen, uh, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, all these guys are going to be 1 pluses. In this column, everybody's going to be a 2 plus. This column, everybody will be 3 plus. This next column we're going to skip. We'll talk about it later. And then we have 3 minus in this column, 2 minus in that column, 1 minus in this column, zip. Okay, so we're going to have our positive ions over here. That's going to be our metals are going to combine with our negative ions over here. That's going to be our nonmetals, and that's what gets us ionic bonding. In this podcast, we're going to talk about how to write the formula for an ionic compound. There are four steps involved. First, you want to find the charges of all of the atoms that you have. Then you're going to put the positive ion first and the negative ion second. You're going to swap and drop your superscripts to subscripts, and you're going to reduce your subscripts to whole number ratios. All right, so let's see what all that means. So first question, what is the formula for the compound form between sulfur and aluminum? All right, well, first you need to know the charges. We're going to get this from our 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus skip, 3 minus 2 minus 1 minus zip. All right, so we have sulfur. Sulfur's charge is he is in the 2 minus column. So he's a, what in the world? There we go, 2 minus. And then we have aluminum. That's Al. And aluminum is in the three plus column. Okay, then we're going to put the positive one first. So we want aluminum first. All right, and then we have sulfur second. Man, this is good handwriting with the mouse. All right, and then we're going to swap and drop our charges. So three is going to come down here. And the 2 is going to go over there. So we're going to end up with Al2S3. So that is our formula, Al2S3. All right, the second one we have aluminum and carbonate. All right, we already know aluminum. Aluminum is a positive one. He is 3 plus, so we're going to put him first. So we got Al3 plus. All right, and then we have carbonate. Carbonate is a polyatomic ion. Polyatomic ions can also um, be in ionic bonding. They're on that special sheet. And carbonate is CO3. I don't know why it disappears every now and again. Just go with it. 2 minus. All right, and we're going to swap and drop just like usual. So our 2 is going to go here, and our 3 is going to go there. All right, so we got Al2 just like before. Why are you not drawing? There it goes. All right, and then we've got CO3, and there's going to be three of them. Stop. Oh, crap. All right, hold on. I've got this little kid in my room screwing me up right now. All right, so we had Al3, and then we've got our CO3. Oh, that's a 3, 2 minus. All right, when we swapped and dropped, we get Al2. Oh, 
all right, and then we've got CO3, and then that other 3 is going to be on the outside. Now, to indicate that we want 3 of the CO3s, we need to put CO3 in parentheses. All right, there we go. There's our formula. Al2, parentheses, CO3, 3. Okay, let's look at the next thing. All right, so you may have noticed by now that there's no trend for the elements in the middle. Okay, so we have this trend, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus skip, 3 minus 2 minus 1 minus dip. We have no trend for these middle elements at all. Okay, so how do we figure out their charges? Well, you're going to do one of two things to get their charges. Either it's going to be given to you in the name, like here we have iron, can be 2 or 3, so Roman numeral 2 or Roman numeral 3. Roman numeral 2 indicates that it's a 2 plus charge, and Roman numeral 3 indicates that it's a 3 plus charge. Okay, so you can tell that way, or you have to infer it from your formula. Okay, so on this one, we have SB and CL. We know the charge on SB because we can do the opposite of swap and drop, so maybe lift and switch. Okay, so that came from the SB originally. So the charge on the SB is 4 plus. Okay, so what is the formula for the compound form between sulfur and iron 2? Okay, well we've got iron. All right, and iron has a 2 plus charge as indicated by the Roman numeral 2. All right, and then we have sulfur which is a 2 minus charge, okay? Uh, eventually, you have to get good at recognizing which one is positive and which one is negative first because it'll save you some time. So I recognize that iron was positive, so I went ahead and put him first. You notice that you have 2 plus and 2 minus. Well, these are just going to cancel, so you're really just going to end up with a formula of FeS. Okay. All right, so what is the formula of the compound form between iron 3 and chlorine? Well, iron is going to have a 3 plus charge, and chlorine is going to have a 1 minus charge. So we got iron. All right, and we got chlorine. I'm going to skip writing the charges at the top, okay? All right, so. 3 plus, which means this 3 comes here, and chlorine was 1 minus, so that 1 goes there, so it's FeCl3. All right, well, how is it different if you have iron 2 plus with chlorine? Well, the only difference is now you'll only end up with two chlorines. You have FeCl2. Man, my mouse is not cooperating with me right now. I love technology. Whoop. Two. Okay. F-E-C-L-2. 